just the reverb. Apparently I didn't have this recording or something when I was checking through it, I guess. But um, the channel seemed to work. It's given me some pops and kicks and things. Um, and the tremolo apparently doesn't work. And the reverb is very, very ringy and kind of noisy. If you crank it up, you have a reasonable amount of hum. The distance on the the distance that the reverb tank is from the rest of it is, you know, a little long, and that could, as well as its orientation, might be causing it to hum a little bit. The other thing that's kind of funky here, uh, it's, it's that's just a reverb tank. Nothing to worry about there. Although I think we might want to put a few pieces of foam in there to get the lightning storm under control. In the back here, there's a light. It's to tell you if there's a problem with V11 and V12, which would be your power tubes or your high voltage fuse or something. And uh, that is supposed to be green when it's good and red when it's bad. And it looks yellow to me. <laughs> so I'm assuming that's probably more good than bad. So the, both of these amps are probably going to be up for uh, some maintenance. Let's see what we got going on. Drop the chassis, take a look around, and see what uh, what we can do to make things better. For okay, interesting observation number one. In unplugging the reverb tank, which is nice that it unplugs. The, co the cables for it were actually laying right up against the power transformer and that mm, could very well be a source of why that was humming. Okay, well all I can say here is oh my goodness. This is 90s, was this like just post red knob or what? Uh, we got... This board is hooked to that board with jumpers. There's no like magic way to unhook or unplug them. That big old 10 water is a replacement for probably whatever was there first that probably overheated and failed. So that's probably the repair that was done because Buddy said this was repaired before. And then we've got our capacitators and things which are probably getting up there being what they were in the years. If we're going to, this is one of those you probably just want to go full maintenance on it. But we've got, okay, the, okay, ooh, interesting, okay, we've got the, the backboard and this board connect together with a ribbon cable that looks like you can unplug it. But then, these are all soldered together with coaxes that don't remove. And we've got, like, transformers hooked into this and that and the other thing, and uh, a bunch of this stuff does and some of it doesn't unplug. Uh, this is just not going to be fun. Just not going to be fun. Why did I do this with my life? Okay, uh, this has a copyright of 2001, so this is a later reissue. This isn't the 90s one. Initially, when I was just looking for schematics for concert amp reverb or concert reverb amp or whatever, uh, I saw one from the 90s. This is from 2001. So great, more cat play gears. Lovely. Uh, okay, so the amount of effort it takes to get to this point is enough to make your average human uh, <clears throat> contemplate why they ever got into this business in the first place. And um, so much so I might write a song about it. You have to unplug the power transformer and try to pull all of those through that little hole and the choke you have to undo and you gotta undo this other board and then you gotta try to pull this back without breaking this board off. It's a holy nightmare. It's gonna take me longer to put the board in and put the board out and plug all this crap on than it ever will for me to change all the components that I need to change. Oh, this is as much as I want to do tonight. New electrolytic filter capacitors additional power supply capacitors and like the bypass capacitors and the little capacitors if it's an electrolytic it got swapped 
nobody in their right mind is going to want to open up this amp and work on this thing. This is such a holy nightmare to get the board out. Hmm. Now, the tremolo circuit does not work. I do have the foot switch for it. I have to read the schematic. It's a tube driven, it looks like it's a tube driven bias shifting tremolo. Those usually sound really good. But of course this has all this electronical gubbins to uh, do the switching. And then remember that big giant um, resistor, somebody stuffed a giant 10k, 10 watt in there that probably originally was maybe a 2 watt or something like that. And this 10 watt just bobbles around, doesn't fit very good, and you can see they melted part of the <laughs> socket there. Yeah, I think we can find something better for that position. Okay, so it's been a few days, and I got sick, so I don't remember where we were on this video. Um, but I will tell you what we've done so far. Now, if you notice, like on these big high-power resistors, you can actually see the holes underneath. Those are elevated off the board, and um, they are, you know, they made provisions to allow them to cool, so that's great. Now, these blue things down here, these are the... These are the two watt resistors, according to Fender, um, and the one that was uh, in this position right there, where I now have that big fat gray one, that had put a big old ugly burn mark on the board, and you know, yuck. Um, again, these two waters, you don't want them down on the board; it's too much for them. Um, so that one there in replacement is a three watt. Some previous technician had put a ten watt in that position. Which, uh, yeah, it works, but it's it's way too big, it's way too floppy. Um, so I tried to sort of space that, you know, far enough away from our capacitor so we won't be roasting our capacitors. The F and T caps are a little fatter. Um, the tremolo did not work, I confirmed that, and I started fishing around in the tremolo section. And uh, you can see my 1 watt blue resistor, that's a R144. That was originally a half watt. 470k resistor. It's now a 1 watt 470k resistor because the original one was open. Um, in my bin of things and stuff, I generally keep the metal film resistors as opposed to the uh, carbon resistors just because I feel they're more durable. All these sort of brownish ones are carbons. So not only did we go up on the wattage and capability, but we also went to the metal film, which is better for stability. A much tougher resistor and my goodness they're cheap for like 20 bucks you can buy a big giant set of them on online there um, yeah so that's cool now the question is is you know well it's not enough it's it's, it's a no-name brand from from China of the resistors well you know they say they're one watt well even if they're three quarters of a watt they're still better than what was in there right now and quite frankly, my experience is they're pretty difficult to destroy, and the tolerances are very, very good. I believe that one is marked as 470, and it measured as like 472, which I think my meter probes, you know, the difference there. So I'm going to continue to sniff through this section, because, again, this is such a mess to take apart. I got all these wires to connect and everything before I can test anything. So I really want to try to sniff out any possible bad components in this area um, prior to reassembling. Okay kids, let me catch you up. Um, I did get it reassembled. This disaster area there by the power transformer input, you're going to need the schematic for that. This stuff over there and the reverb transformer and that back line this back line, that stuff's all kind of labeled with color codes, so you'll probably be in okay shape with that. Um, we're running at reduced power. The Variac says we're running at, uh, I don't know, 80 volts maybe, which means it's probably 90 because this Variac's inaccurate. But uh, we have sound. Let's see here. Let's make some sound. There you go. There's beep, beep, beep. Just, you know. This is how we get really high tech when we test stuff here. And then if we turn the tremolo on, like there, now I get... You hear that? Yeah, baby. So that's what I wanted to see here and know. 
Um, makes me happy. I think I've got all the issues solved. Uh, obviously, I got to sound test it, get it put back in the cabinet. The customer was hoping to pick it up tomorrow, which seems very plausible at this point. So we're going to need to check the bias on the tubes, but. Uh, the tremolo was due to, in this case, and again, this is not going to be for you, it's going to be R144. R144, I replaced it with the blue resistor. That resistor went open, so there was our problem there. The power resistor, the 10K, somebody had replaced that with a 10 watt, which is just enormous, so I replaced it with a 3 watt, which originally it had one of these piddly little blue two watts and I think that's a blue one watt but that blue two watt in that position that's too much for it you got to lift it off the board and maybe you, you want to have you either need a good two watt like CE distribution cells or use like a three watt um, got all new F&T filter caps and new bypass caps electrolytics have all been changed because reasons the amp is you know 20 years old and it ain't easy to take apart. So while you're in there, we got them. We got all those. We got all that stuff. So now our filtering and our electric system should be running clean as a whistle, and our functions are working. So now we can bias the tubes, and then keep putting it back together because there's still plenty more to put back together. Okay, so I gave myself a fright. That's the British way to put it, I think. At least that's how they put it in those movies that I see. Um, on the fender amps, the tone stacks, tone stacks are subtractive, meaning if you've got bass middle treble at zero, your output is like almost zero. And I switched over to the drive channel and got almost zero and panicked for a moment. Um, but yeah, we're, we're cool, so we got the clean channel going. Which of course that didn't work before. Um, oh, I got the presence down. That's probably why this sounds a little, little more underwater. Yeah, better. Oh, much better. Yeah, yeah. I had it underwater. And then the drive channel, I think I've got it set to something appropriate. I don't have a lot of bass in it because I don't want to be loud and blow the camera up. But. Yeah. Give it extreme gain. I should answer the phone. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.